Okay, so today we're going to be talking about quadratic inequalities and solving them. Recall inequalities is where um, you have a greater than, less than, greater than, or equal to, or less than, or equal to sign. We are going to solve the quadratic inequalities in two ways. The first way is to use the zeros of the graph in order to solve the quadratic inequality. We recall the zeros of the graph are x-intercepts or otherwise known as when y is equal to zero. So in our first example, we have solve x squared minus 3x minus 4 look greater than or equal to zero by using the graphing method. So notice the graphing method itself is using solely the graph of this quadratic expression on the left side and using the zeros of that graph to solve the inequality. So this is more of a visual way of solving these inequalities. Okay, so in order to solve this inequality and use the zeros of the graph, we probably should find the zeros of the graph, maybe the vertex and the y-intercept. I think those will be enough ordered pairs to graph the quadratic and to be able to solve the inequality. So step one, let's go ahead and find the y-intercept. I like to find the y-intercept first because that is when x is equal to zero and it's usually the fastest order pair you can get because if you have x squared minus 3x minus 4 and you put in zero, notice you just get zero squared minus 3 times zero minus 4, which ends up being just negative 4. In other words, you have the ordered pair 0, negative 4. The second step, I would go ahead and find the x-intercepts. Otherwise, this is known when y is equal to 0, but in our case, we're going to call it zeros. meaning we're going to take the entire quadratic x squared minus 3x minus 4 and set it equal to 0. So this should remind you um, to factor and use the zero product property in order to solve. So the first thing I would do is factor this into a product of two binomials and we'll get x minus 4 and x plus 1. Then I could set each factor equal to 0 and we have x minus 4 equal to 0 or x plus 1 is equal to 0. So then we get x equal to positive 4 and x equal to negative 1. So these are our x-intercepts. We have two of them. Otherwise, if you like to see them in ordered pairs, it would be 4 comma 0, negative 1 comma 0. So right now we have the y-intercept and the zeros of the graph, which are at 4, 0, and negative 1, 0. We have three ordered pairs. The last ordered pair we're going to obtain is the vertex. And in order to obtain the vertex, we need to find an ordered pair, and we call it HK. H, I like to always think of as horizontal, mean horizontal axis. So um, that always reminds me that I'm always finding the x-coordinate first. So h, which is the x-coordinate of the vertex, is negative b over 2a. And these are the same coefficients that um, you would use in order of um, the quadratic formula or anything like that. So we're going to have negative b, and our b is negative 3, be careful with the negatives, all over 2 times a, and our a leading coefficient is 1. So then we get 3 halves. Otherwise, um, we can say it is 1.5. The next coordinate we need is the k-coordinate, meaning the y-coordinate of my vertex. k is evaluated when x is equal to 1.5. So it's just whatever um, your quadratic would spit out when x is 1.5. So this means that you're going to have 1.5 squared minus 3 times 1 and a half minus 4. 
So here is the h coordinate of your vertex. All right, so you could just put that in the calculator and you would get negative 6.25. So your vertex would be 1 and a half comma negative 6.25. And again, you can leave it in fractions, but when I'm graphing, I like to see decimals because I know exactly where they should go on the x and y axis. Okay, so let's graph these four ordered pairs and connect the dots and we'll get this nice little quadratic graph, which is a parabola. So the first one, we're going to have 0, negative 4. That's going to be your y-intercept. Your zeros, which are at 4, 0 and negative 1, 0. And notice these zeros here are your barriers to your intervals in your solution of your in to your inequality. And the last order pair we're going to graph is the vertex, which is at 1 and a half, so positive 1 and a half, and negative 6.25, which is about there. Connect the dot. and you get this really nice inequality. The first thing I'm going to do is color in the top parts in red. And I'm going to go ahead and use the zeros right, as my barriers. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I noticed that the top part, meaning the all the y values above the x-axis, are positive. meaning that y would be greater than 0. And the bottom half, meaning all the y values below the x-axis, are negative. Meaning that y is less than 0. Okay, why is this important? Well, if we go back to our original problem, and we notice we are trying to solve when x squared minus 3x minus 4 is greater than or equal to 0. Okay, that is a really important part because knowing that these y values that come out for x values have to be greater than or equal to 0 says that we're looking for y values greater than or equal to 0, meaning positive y values. Or it also could be equal to 0. Notice when y is equal to 0, we get the zeros of the graph. So notice that that's why we use the zeros in the graphing method to solve these quadratic inequalities. Positive y values are all the y values above the x-axis. So notice that all the y values in this case are greater than or equal to zero, meaning all the red part. Well, since this is a parabola that shoots all the way up, notice that our smallest x value would be at negative infinity, and we would go all the way down until we hit, boom, this first zero at negative one. And we can include negative one into our interval, so we'll use a bracket. But the moment we get to the right of negative 1, we're in uncharted territory. We're at y values below the x-axis. Our y values are negative. We don't want that because we specifically wanted this quadratic to be greater than or equal to 0, meaning y values greater than or equal to 0, meaning positive y values or the ones that are equal to 0. So the moment you get into the blue territory, you're below the x-axis, you're getting negative y values, and that's not what you want to solve your inequality. So you're going to have to jump all the way to this 0, which is at 4, and notice you're in the clear. All the y values to the right of 4 are all above the x-axis. They're all positive y values, so you can use it all the way out to positive infinity. The solution to your inequalities will depend on your inequality and the right side being 0 and noticing if you're going to have strictly greater than 0, strictly less than 0, meaning you're not going to include 
the zeros or greater than or equal to zero or less than or equal to zero. We happen to have a greater than or equal to zero. So to solve this, just look at the graph, look at, look at the parts of the graphs that are um, greater than or equal to zero and we get negative infinity all the way down to the x value negative one. I'll put a parenthesis around negative infinity, but in my given problem, I could have it equal to zero. So I could go ahead and put a bracket on my zero negative one. But then I have to jump all the way over to four. So union four all the way out to positive infinity. Four is a zero. Our inequality said we could include zero, so we can put a bracket on four and that's it.